to thank uh, Professor Diana Bryder for the invitation and Professors Ian and Brian for inviting me to participate in this round table with this very tough topic <laughs> that is neoliberalism. And I'm very happy <coughs> to say that I'm, I am one of the sons of Brazil, Canada, Knowledge Exchange Project because I did part of my PhD here a couple of years ago, so it's, I'm really happy to be here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a video and try to unpack one quote by Michael Apple and um, based on my classes and my experiences <coughs> on, uh, um, in technical and vocational education. So I'd like to start with a video. <coughs> It's a video from this professor. I'm calling her Maria, Lu Maria Lucia. I'm sorry, I can't forget the baby here. And she is a professor at FATEC, one of the places that I carried out the research. They are the faculties of technology in Brazil. The relationship between uh, FATEC is the technological education and society. Uh, I think uh, that um, <coughs> uh, students come here because they have an expectation that technological schools for techies are practical. They don't waste time with theory. <laughs> okay? So, and as soon as you leave here, you have a job, or even while you take the course, you get a job. Mm -hmm. So, there is an expectation that you'll be absorbed very soon by the market. And the market a job market also has a representation that students who study here have a good, uh, get a good education and very practical. Right. So basically that's the focus. And there is a, a, a political thing here too. FATEC has been, um, <coughs> have been promoted by the Polistas government as uh, a way of uh, promoting education uh, with a quick uh, insertion <coughs> in the job market. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry about the volume, but basically what she's saying you know, is that FATEX, the Faculties of Technologies in the state of Sao Paulo, focus on the market, so preparing students for the market, and this is something that I would like to unpack. So um, I, start with, I start with this <coughs> video from Professor Maria Lucia because for me it represents some of the new liberal discourses which influence education and moreover technical and vocational education in Brazil. Uh, so technical education I'm referring to the median level, high schools, and vocational, uh, professional <coughs> high level. Um, so in dialogue with Samara's presentation yesterday, when she claimed that the students investigated in her, in her research want to learn English for so many other reasons, for cultural uh, purposes, for example, other than uh, work market insertion, this video represents an opposing idea or an opposing discourse. Uh, most professors and students from technical education believe that, and here I quote, as soon as you leave, <coughs> leave here, leave university, you have a job, or even while you're taking the course, you get a job. So I also start this presentation with a quote by Michael Apple, uh, which I will try to unpack. I believe that both the video and this citation by Apple raise relevant questions regarding neoliberalism and education, and I also believe that these questions are relevant to other educational fields, as well as to the debate being carried out by the Brazilian Canada uh, project. And here's the quote. Um, so over the past decade, it has become increasingly clear that the school curriculum has become a better ground. Uh, stimulated in large part by new liberal complaints about economically useless knowledge, new conservative laments about uh, the supposed loss of discipline and the lack of real knowledge, and by religious authoritarian populist rel relentless attacks on schools for the supposed loss of God-given <coughs> traditional values. Discussions of what should be taught in school, schools and how it should be taught are now as contentious as at any time in our history. Um, so based on Professor Maria Lucia's discourse on the role of the faculties of technology and society 
and on Apple's ideas on doing critical education in conservative times, I would like to briefly uh, problematize uh, three questions. Has the school curriculum become a better ground in technical and vocational education in Brazil? And have we been challenged by traditional educational policy makers, or to what Apple is, refer is referring as neoconservatives, when they state that what we teach, and here I'm taking the position of, the, of a critical educator, lack real knowledge, and what should be taught in this school? <coughs> and number three, can we challenge such neoliberal discourses in technical education when this kind of education targets the markets? Um, so, first of all, it is important to point out that technical and vocational education have grown exponentially in the country. Both federal and state governments have invested on the construction of new schools and faculties all over the country, and the state of Sao Paulo is an example because, um, so these are the technical schools, we call it TEC and FATEC. Like 10 years ago, about 10, 15 years ago, there were 13 schools in the state of Sao Paulo. And nowadays, there are more than 200 with 250,000 students. And 10 years ago, there were two faculties of technology. And nowadays, in 2012, there are 53 all over the state of Sao Paulo with 55,000 students. So it's, it's a big sector in the state of Sao Paulo. And another example for me of this expansion is the fact that we're still under election process in Brazil <coughs> this October. And it is interesting to point out that José Serra, one of the candidates of, uh, by PSDB, the, the Social Democrat Party, when talking about education, emphasizes that technical schools and the faculties of technology are the ones presenting the best results. Um, and according to, he, to his electoral propaganda, three out of four students uh, graduated in these uh, schools get a job. So <coughs> even if this were entirely true, uh, what about formal schooling, what we call ensino medio, uh, and have they got the same results? So connecting these reflections to the first question, has school curriculum become a better ground in, um, in technical and vocational education? The answer, I think, is quite complex provided that official policies will state that technical and vocational education should prepare students, and here I quote, and promote a permanent process of learning and teaching which guarantees professional competence. At the same time, it guarantees the effective participation in citizenship rights. So in theory, uh, both uh, professionalism and citizenship ought to be the aims of uh, technical education. In practice, we could answer, I could answer, yes and no. No, it is not a better ground because neoliberal education has, um, has influenced this kind of education since its implementation. So from the start, it is a neoliberal education. Um, and the teaching of English and its <coughs> curricular orientations are examples. The curriculum is based on ESP, English for Specific Purposes and on structuralist models of language uh, teaching and learning. So communicative approach, grammar methods, tr uh, translation. And yes, there have been some attempts to integrate the teaching of English and education as my PhD um, research, which investigated this context, showed. So yes and no, there is this tension. Um, a second question, <coughs> have we been challenged by the traditional educational policy makers when they state that uh, what we teach lack real knowledge, uh, so what should be taught in schools. <coughs> I believe that this has uh, been one of the topics we have been discussing during this event, and yesterday's roundtable on language teacher uh, education provided us with some insightful, insightful ideas on what should or could be the postures of the educator. So, should we separate critical education from linguistic enhancement so that both new and experienced teachers, there is a kind of guidance and structured work, just like mentioned by an Andrea, or shouldn't they be separated and critical approach together with linguistic teaching should be part of the educator's permanent posture, um, pointed out by Roberto. I believe that uh, this is um, 
one of the most important questions that the <coughs> national project is trying to investigate. And narrowing down to my context, the teaching of English at the faculties of technology in Sao Paulo, I believe that this dialogue, at least at the policy making level, hasn't been established. And moreover, traditional neoliberal education, the one focused on international certifications, business markets, and communicative skills prevails. Which takes me to the third and last reflection. Is it possible, um, is it, oh, just a second. That's the bad thing when you read. Okay, right, sorry. Is it possible to challenge such neoliberal discourses in technical education when this kind of education targets the market and is essentially neoliberal? This is a big question for me as an English teacher belonging to this in institution and being from an academic uh, background of critical, critical education. I will draw on Monica Heller's thoughts on the article, The Communication of Language, as well as on Valkyria Montemor's ideas on the neoliberalism logic. So according to my interpretation of both authors, it is uh, paramount to acknowledge the fact that neoliberalism is the basis of our social <coughs> practices and that it is the logics of the late or fast capitalism. So in the end, I have reflected upon the idea of problematizing neoliberalism instead of questioning it all the time in my classes. And in the case of vocational education, I think we should accept the fact that it, it is market oriented and this is a very important sector. At the same time, we could add to this market oriented uh, education when it's possible critical <laughs> thinking and critical education. So to conclude, I have briefly analyzed some tensions regarding neoliberalism and technical education, hoping that they might contribute to the debates we have fostered so far. I think neoliberalism, seen as an economic force, um, even as a philosophy or a kind of education, <coughs> deprives oneself from one's self's choice by masking the idea of the liberal. So is this liberal, liberal for whom, just like uh, uh, has been pointed out by my colleagues. So in this sense, it is a logic that I believe should be problematized by this project. I'm, I'm very glad to, to have some ideas on it in this table. And um, Dr. Diana Bryden in the opening session reminded us of some of the overarching goals of this project. For example, to share our knowledge and to get to know each other better having the teaching of English and its language policies as a key site of intervention. I think that technical and vocational education, representatives of, new, of neoliberal education, offers us some insights on how complex language education can be in uh, globalizing times. And, uh, thank you.